up guys, it's your boy, Barca boy 103 Today we're going to be reacting to the Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Firstly, Xavi dreams of signing Bernardo Silva this summer. He believes he is the solution to his midfield problem and he will go for him and he will give the green light of the Frankie de Jong sale if he's guaranteed the signing of Bernardo Silva and also his agent Jorge Mendes will do everything in his power to make the deal possible. And I also have the price that Man City would sell Bernardo Silva for this summer. Now along with the midfield, we're also looking for a new striker. We have a quick update on the Luna Zisaga. Looking a bit ropey, could go for the long term, but also the club want to sign a new right winger. We're feeding the priority, but again, he's going to be very, very expensive. Hopefully, Mateo Aleman will travel to Leeds in the next couple of days to try and negotiate for the transfer. And also, the backup for Rafinha is Angel Di Maria as a free transfer, but Juventus are pushing for his deal and they're about to retract their offer if Angel Di Maria does not give an answer as soon as possible. Now, of course, if you're going to sign players, players will have to be sold this summer and the main one being Frankie de Jong. There will be a new bid from Manchester United in the next couple of days, but Barcelona are expected to reject that offer because it won't be in the region and the evaluations they want. In the end, a deal is about to be happening, but Manchester United are taking a long time to make this deal happen, but in the end, a deal is expected. And finally, a big contract renewal update on Usman Dembele. Nobody wants him. Chelsea don't want him. PSG, Bayern Munich, Man United, and he's only left with Barcelona's offer. And he does have now eight days left of his Barcelona contract. But before we get into it, make sure you guys smash that like button down below. Let's try to get the 300 likes in this video. Be very much appreciated. Also, if you're new, make sure you subscribe down below if you haven't already. And let's get into it. Let's start off with the transfer news over the past 24 hours. Now, the first player that we have been linked with is, of course, the number one target and priority signing for Barcelona this summer, Robert Lewandowski. Now, first coming in from Build in Germany, they came out saying that recently, in addition to the phone call between Lewandowski and the sporting director of Bayern Munich, there was also an actual face-to-face -face meeting. However, Lewandowski's opinion remains unchanged. He wants to play for Barcelona next season and will do everything he needs to do on his side to make it possible. Again, there was a meeting a few days ago between Bayern Munich and Lewandowski. They tried to convince him to stay, but he said, no, I want to go to Barcelona this summer. Now, over the past few videos, we had a lot of course Lewandowski rumors that I report to you guys, and they've all been coming in from Germany. And now finally, we have some reports coming in from Spain, which aren't looking too good at the moment. And it's coming in from Juan Marti and Alberto Roque from Relief. They came out saying there's some uneasiness at Barcelona regarding Robert Lewandowski. Bayern Munich have not yet responded to, of course, the first offer they made. Despite signing Sadio Mane, they remain firm in their will to keep Lewandowski. Lewandowski only wants to go to Barcelona in hopes the situation will change. The situation is not favorable today, but the summer is long and Barcelona will do everything to sign Lewandowski. He is a priority and alternate strategies are also being considered to get the transfer done if the operation remains stalled for a long period of time. I mean, we're going to play the long game. I'd be shocked. I'm going to say this. Hopefully I'm wrong. I pray to God I'm wrong. I would be shocked if we sign anyone before we go on the US tour. And remember, I told you guys a few days ago, Chavi wants the whole squad ready to go, all signed before the tour. There's no chance. We're going to play the long game with Lewandowski, apparently. And apparently, Bayern Munich still do not want to sell him if we make a good offer. It's going to have to come down to that FIFA rule. I think the Article 17 where Lewandowski has to force the move, go to FIFA and say, I want to leave, determine my right valuation. And that's when they have to sell Bayern Munich because... And I'm not trying to sit here for three months putting Lewandowski in my thumbnail and title at the beginning every single week. It's just going to be so boring. That's why in today's video, I don't have Lewandowski in the title and th thumbnail because I'm sick, death I'm sick to death of it. Because it's the same crap every single week. But now this is the first time we get some actual good news. Or not good news, but new news. And now it's all saying that Barcelona will play the long game. This deal could take on for the rest of the summer. So we'll wait and see with Lewandowski. I'm still very confident we will sign him. I think in the end, he will be a Barcelona player. The question now is... When will it happen? Now, along with a striker, another position in the attack that Barcelona consider a priority strength in this summer is, of course, the right wing. But at the moment, we have no idea who we're going to sign and what race we are actually in. Of course, the two main targets are Rafinha and his backup option is Di Maria. On Rafinha, there are reports coming in from England saying that Tottenham have already made contact with Leeds over a potential transfer for Rafinha. And Arsenal are also ready to battle Barcelona for the Brazilian now. Hopefully in the next week, there will be some sort of meeting between Mateo Aleman and Leeds and with Deco there as well. 
just to at least put an end to this crap like oh Leeds want this money and they want this they want that they want add-ons Barcelona can only play this or that I'm sick to death of it all I want now is my table edit month to go to Leeds sit down and figure it out how much you want 60 okay walk out the door how much you want 50 okay we're about 40 plus 10 if we pay you 40 installments over the next three years you know that way you can negotiate but sitting here oh Arsenal want him Tottenham wants him it's all a bunch of crap in my opinion. So we'll see. I think Rafinha is of course a priority. We heard reports a few days ago saying that Laporta will sign him yes or yes. He's promised Rafinha and Adeko as well that he will try to sign him as much as they can. So we'll wait and see on Rafinha. I think he'll be a great signing. But in the end, Barcelona will not overpay. Currently, his backup option in the right wing position is Angel Di Maria. Now, Mateo Morito has come out saying that Juventus want an answer from Angel Di Maria as soon as possible. But they have not received any communication from him. Now apparently Juventus have put a deadline for Di Maria by the end of this week. They want to answer from him, yes or no, or else they will retract their contract offer from him. Di Maria is pretty much sitting on, sitting at home, banking on the fact that Barcelona will contact him at some point. If he can choose between Barcelona and Juventus, he will choose Barcelona every single day of the week. The problem right now is that Barcelona focus on Rafinha so much, they may lose their backup option in Angel Di Maria. Juventus are staying firm. Apparently, Di Maria will accept it, of course, if Barcelona not coming in for him. But at the moment, there are no indications that we will do so because we're so focused on Rafinha. And it looks like our backup option could be sleeping away now if you think about it if the belly leaves we'll talk about him near the end of the video no Di Maria no Rafinha our next option in line I hate to say it it is Adnan Yenazai as a free agent from Real Sociedad well, I mean it's looking pretty bad at the moment but we'll wait and see again I think the club can get something done with Rafinha of course but again we have to go there and meet with Leeds to at least break some sort of negotiations and of course Di Maria is sitting in the background waiting for Barcelona so we'll have to wait and see but right now Barcelona have no idea whether or not they're gonna be signing a new right winger this summer now along with the attack another priority this summer for Barcelona is to reinforce the defense more specifically in the center back department to sign a center back alongside the already signed center back Andreas Christensen and at the moment Jules Koundé is the number one priority. Now, Luis Rojo from Marca came out saying that Barcelona are not willing to pay to be a 60 million euro asking price for Jules Kunde. They can only offer around 40 to 50 million euros. I think the problem right now that we have with Kunde is Chelsea. They're there in the background, ready to pay what Sevilla want. And again, Kunde is open to that move, but he prefers Barcelona. We're in such a great spot because all these players before us. The problem now is reaching an agreement with their, you know, current valued clubs. I think for Kunde, it's going to be difficult. I would say it's not going to happen. I think we should wait. I think we should just drop it and go for Koulibaly, in my opinion. Koulibaly is a better center back at the moment. He's cheaper and is, of course, more feasible as well. Because Napoli are very reasonable. They say, okay, we want 35 million euros. That's it. Take it or leave it. So if you are doing the same thing, but they are pricing Kunde, of course, at a high value, which he is at the moment. I think, you know, you think about it, 40, maybe 50 for Lewandowski, 50 for Rafinha, 50 for Kunde. That's almost 150 million euros on these three players. We have the money. I think we do. Apparently, we have 200 million euros, but is it really worth it to spend 60, 70% of our budget on three players? When you know we could use a left back, we can use a right back, maybe another midfielder as well. It's it's looking complicated, Kunde, but of course, Barcelona will stay in the race. Chavi wants him at all costs, and of course, there can be negotiations that could happen with Sevilla. We can say, oh, we have, you know, Desi you can offer him to Ngao, Longlet, we can get the Umtiti. The club will try and do so, but again, it is still the early stage between Barcelona and Sevilla in negotiations. So we'll wait and see what happens, but again, Kunde is the top target for Barcelona and more specifically Chavi in the center back department. Now, a position for Barcelona this summer that isn't the priority at the moment, but it could be later on in the window is, of course, the midfield and Chavi. Chavi is demanding the signing of Bernardo Silva this summer if the sale of Frankie de Jong happens. Now, Fernando Polo from Deportivo came out saying that Pedri Busquets Bernardo is a midfield trio which Chavi wants for next season. The coach believes that Bernardo Silva is his closest player to resemble Chavi, the player himself. Moreover, Pedri considers similarities to Iniesta and Busquets, of course, is still in Barcelona. Chavi likes the young a lot, but he likes Bernardo Silva more. The characteristics of an interior which Chavi wants is not offered by any midfielder in the squad right now, apart from Pedri but Bernardo does meet those criteria. Moreover, Xavi knows that Bernardo Silva is open to joining Barcelona. So again, if you ask Xavi, do you want to swap Bernardo with Frankie? He would say yes, and that's the only way he would give the green light to sell Frankie de Jong. Again, if we sell Frankie and don't get Bernardo, we're going to look like absolute fools. But again, I still believe firmly that if we do sell Frankie, Bernardo Silva's transfer 
is possible. Fabrizio Romano has come out saying that Man City's asking price of sell Bernardo Silva is around 85 to 95 million euros. Now, if we sell Frankie for 80 plus 20, there's the money right there. You have 80 from Frankie, you can chuck an extra five, maybe extra 10 in there from, let's say we sell Ricky Pusha Mangetha, but bada bing, bada boom, you have the money for Bernardo. I think if we sell Frankie, the transfer is possible. The real question really is, can we reach an agreement with Manchester City? Now, Manu Sanz, who's a very reliable journalist in AES and also very close to Jorge Mendes, the agent, he came out saying that Man City want around 80 million euros for Bernardo Silva. So again, it's basically a straight swap between Frankie and Bernardo, but of course we're gonna you know sell Frankie and use that money for Bernardo. I think I'm, I'm the confidence is increasing in me that if we do sell Frankie, we will get Bernardo because Man City want a price in the same region as we sell Frankie, and of course that will benefit us. So I think it's looking very positive for Bernardo Silva at the moment. Now Heaven Miguel from AES came out saying that Jorge Mendes has told Bernardo Silva that he will do everything possible to complete his transfer to Barcelona this summer, if of course the Frankie de Jong sale happens. And finally, Henry Codes from Cope came out saying there is a verbal agreement between Pep Guardiola and Bernardo Silva through which the player will be allowed allowed to leave Man City if Barcelona make the right offer. So again, so it's, it's, it's pretty much the Frankie situation switched over here. But we, of course, know Man City. We have a great relationship with them. All their board members used to work for Barcelona. Their managers, the best managers ever coached Barcelona. We have a good relationship with them. If we sell Frankie, we'll make the same offer for Bernardo. If they say yes, of course, personal terms will not be an issue. Once our bid gets accepted, Bernardo Silva will be a Barcelona player. But again, it depends on the sale of Frankie de Jong, but no doubt Barcelona want to sign Bernardo Silva this summer and Xavi is dreaming about his signing. Let's now discuss the players who have been rumored to leave Barcelona over the past 24 hours. First up, you guessed it, it is Frankie de Jong and both sources on today's story for Frankie is coming in from the UK. Firstly from Rob Dawson from ESPN, very very reliable for Man United News. He came out saying that Barcelona have blamed La Liga's strict financial rules for their tough negotiation stance on Frankie de Jong during the transfer talks with Manchester United. Manchester United bosses are demanding that the size of the fee reflects the fact that Barcelona want to offload Frankie de Jong, but the Spanish side have insisted their hands are tied by La Liga. So Man United are saying look, you want to sell the players or give us a discount? I mean what the bloody hell are we dealing with here? Have these are these football people that made United like my freaking god? Oh, you want to sell him? Give us a discount. We're selling him because we want to get Bernardo Silva. We want to make the balance straight. I just want to like just slap them in the face because they're not understanding what's going on here. They're playing crybaby. They're playing soft boy. They're playing dumb. They're trying to play dumb so we say, oh, sorry, yeah, 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 so we can pay, we can give them what they want. My freaking god. Now remember, by the way. We are still in the 1-3 rule in La Liga, which means today, if we sell Frankie de Jong for 80 million euros, which, which Barcelona wants, plus 20 in add-ons, we can only spend 27 million of that 80 million on transfers, which means Bernardo Silva, impossible. So Barcelona have to do first is activate an economic lever, whatever it is, TV rights, BLM, Barca Studio. We have to activate one, of course, before June the 30th, which the club will do, and then after that, we won't be in the 1-3 rule anymore, we'll be in the 1-1 rule. That way we can use every single penny that we sell from Frankie de Jong on Bernardo Silva. So keep that in mind as well. We can reach an agreement with Manchester United. We can say, okay, agreement has been reached. Go talk to Frankie de Jong and then afterwards we will activate this deal. But the deal cannot be official until Barcelona activates an economic lever or else we cannot spend the money that we get from Frankie de Jong, which means Bernardo Silva's deal is impossible. Now the Guardian in the UK have come out saying that Manchester United are preparing a second offer of 70 million euros plus bonuses for Frankie de Jong. Get that garbage out of my face. What did I say in yesterday's video? I need to see an 8 after the pound symbol or the euro symbol, sorry. No 7s. If I see a 7, it's a, I'm, if I get that offered, I say 7, reject, reject. Get that garbage out of my face. We are giving you a 120 million euro player for a 100 million package not even straight up 100 million euros like i mean manchester united are so frustrating to deal with this is why many united and barcelona don't do too many deals because they're so damn annoying because all oh, they're they're run by businessmen at least barcelona we have businessmen and we also have football people joan laporta mateo aleman jody croif are football people we have some economic people in the background eduardo romeo Alcer hill maybe rafael uste as well many united is run by bank people they want the best deal possible for the cheap and this is why it's so frustrating to deal with them. But again, they're our only option. Either we sell them to Fra we sell Frankie to them, or else there's no Bernardo, and that's what Barcelona want to do. So wait and see. Again, the bid has not been submitted quite yet. It has to be. Remember, on Friday, 
Man United are taking out dividends from Manchester United, which means that the owners are taking out money from Manchester United, reported around 11 million euros. They have to cover that up with a signing or else their fans are going to go ballistic, absolutely ballistic. So they got to they gotta submit a bid before Friday. I would say probably today or tomorrow is the prime day because doing it on actually a Friday will not cover up the fact they're taking 11 million euros out of the club. So we'll have to wait and see what happens, but no doubt in my mind that Frankie de Jong, but the end of the transfer window, will be a Manchester United player. The question now in my mind is how much money are we going to get for him and also will we sign Bernardo Silva to replace him? Now, a player who Barcelona are desperate, and I mean desperate, to get rid of this summer under any circumstances is, of course, Samuel Omtiti. Now, Sport have come out saying that Samuel Omtiti wants to go back to Lyon this summer, but the French club have doubts about his physical condition. And also, this summer, there will be an exit for Samuel Omtiti, either a loan or a contract termination. I don't think that will happen. I think the loan deal will happen in the end because Omtiti, the only way he can keep value at, for himself is that he stays as a Barcelona player and he wants to go out on loan. He's been doing barbecues every single day on his IG, on his Instagram account. I've seen them. He's cooking up rice, he's cooking up meat. That's all he does. That's all he does. He sits there on 100,000 euros per week doing absolutely nothing. He needs to leave the club this summer. I'm a bit optimistic more than a few summers ago, but if I were to bet right now, I would say Omtiti will be a Barcelona player next season, but let's hope to God not. The club are trying everything. They made a promise to Omtiti. He cried to run Laporta last summer. He came back, played one game the whole entire season. He broke his toe, was out for four months. He has got to leave the club this summer, and Sport is saying he will either leave on loan or a contract termination. I hope it's a contract termination, but I don't think it will be because, of course, if you're going to terminate his contract, you have to give him money. I think Omtiti is in the same bracket as Pjanic. Wants to go out on loan, does not want to be a problem for the club, but wants every single freaking euro left in his contract and he will not give up a single penny. So we'll wait and see on Omtiti, but again, the club are desperate and will do it under any circumstances to get rid of him this summer. Let's now discuss some contract renewal updates around the first team at Barcelona. There's one update today. And it's on the contract renewal of Ousmane Dembele. These French boys are really starting to piss me off. It's coming from Ben Jacobs from the UK, who's very reliable around Chelsea News. He came out saying that Dembele does not have any formal offers at the moment. He's open to joining PSG, but they aren't considering him at the moment. Thomas Tuchel wants a reunion, but no terms are agreed. And Barcelona are frustrated as no proper decision has been made by Ousmane Dembele. And Sport came out back in the statement as well, saying that both Chelsea and Paris Saint-Germain have cooled their interest in Ousman Dembele. Chelsea are surprised by his demands and also worried about his injury record. And Luis Campos, a new sporting director at PSG, is not in favor of his arrival. Dembele is out of contract at Barcelona in exactly eight days. He either has to wait for other offers to consider the Barcelona's offer is still valid, Barcelona is still far from his demands, and the club is clear they will not increase it. So again, Dembele still has that contract on the table from Barcelona. Apparently he rejected it a few days ago, but it's still on the table. He wants to accept it. Barcelona not increase it or decrease it. They're going to keep it there. And Dembele again, no one wants him. PSG don't want him. Luis Campos. Chelsea don't want to pay him the money that he wants, but Thomas Tuchel wants him. So that could be a big favor as well. Uh, Bayern Munich don't want to pay the money for him. May United don't want to pay the money for him. You could live with your reality. Where did that leave you? Right back to us. He's got no other option. And I think, to be honest, with Rafinha being difficult, Di Maria going to Juventus, I would rather renew Dembele's contract than go out and spend 60 million years on Rafinha. I think that will have a big impact if Dembele ends up renewing by that 2% chance that there is right now. I don't think Barcelona will go all in for Rafinha. Maybe they'll spend 40, at least they know they'll walk away. But Dembele is not renew. You get to go all in for Rafinha, maybe end up paying 60 or 70 what Leeds United wants. And of course, that will cost Barcelona a lot of money. So, we'll wait and see with Dembele. Eight days until his contract at Barcelona expires and he's no longer a football club Barcelona player. Of course, it can go on to July 31st. He can still be a free agent and he can still end up renewing his contract with Barcelona. But at the end of the day, he's only a Barcelona player for eight more days. We'll have to wait and see. But again, there is still a small chance that he stays at Barcelona, but 98% chance he will leave the club as a free agent. But there's that 2% chance where he could end up renewing his contract. Let's now discuss some of the news surrounding Barcelona over the past 24 hours. Firstly, a quick update on the futures of the captains. Now, Juan Marti came out saying, there are board members at Barcelona who believe that certain players should take the path of Xavi, Iniesta, and Puyol and leaving the club at the time when they're no longer beneficial for the club. Now, you might be wondering, 
who are they talking about? Well, it's not Roberto. He just renewed his contract. It's not Jordi Alba. He's still one of the best left backs in the world and will be the starting left back next season. It's not Busquets because Xavi still wants to keep him. Fernando Portofino Bortivo came out saying that coach Xavi Hernandez still blindly believes in Busquets to be Barcelona's single pivot going to the next season. It's PK. The club believe that PK should be retiring because at the moment he offers nothing to Barcelona in their opinion. Of course, PK disagrees and you know what? I think I can start for Barcelona. You can start the best center back in the world, and I guarantee I will still be a starter. Is it a bit of cockiness? Maybe. Is it a bit of arrogance? Maybe. At the end of the day, we've seen legends leave at their peak. Chavi could have done it for one more year, maybe two. I think Iniesta definitely could have done it for two more years. Puyo could have kept going, and other pl players as well could have kept going. But at the end of the day, they want to leave at their peak and not cause a burden on Barcelona, and they all decided. PK is being basically told by the club to retire and he's saying no. Could it be because of his salary? I have no idea. It could be or it could just be for the fact that he's not good enough at the top level anymore. I think without, I think no matter what this season will be, this upcoming season of course, will be Busquets and PK's last season. It could be Roberto as well because of course he's only signed a one year renewal. I think Jordi Alba will be the first captain going to the 23-24 season. But this season will be the last for a lot of veterans. It will be a big change, but again, some board members believe they should be leaving now and not at the end of next summer. Now, along with Gerard Piquet, there's also someone else at Barcelona who Xavi has some doubts about, and that is the BT manager, Sergi Barjuan. Now, Gerard Romero came out saying the continuation of Sergi Barjuan as the coach of Barcelona Athletic next season is not so clear. Xavi wants reliable people at the BT level. So apparently, Xavi has doubts, but I will tell you this for a fact, Juan Laporta is very grateful to Sergio Barjuan because of course he came in for the first team for a couple weeks and also they're very good friends. I think no matter what, Sergio Barjuan will be here next season whether it's a B team coach or the sporting director for the B team. He will be here next season. I think he will stay as a coach because of Juan Laporta's power. He likes him a lot. They're very, very good friends on and off the pitch, but he could get sacked and then go up a level and as a sporting director for uh, the B team. But I think in the end he will stay, but Chari does have some doubts about his playing style and him actually coaching the B team. Now the final topic that I want to discuss before I end off this video is some big news around Espy Barca. Next season, well not next season coming up, but the following season after that, the 2023-2024 season, Barcelona will not be playing at the Camp Nou, we'll be playing at the Olympic Stadium, Montjuic in Barcelona for a whole entire season to of course comply with the fact there will be a lot of construction done on the cap now, it was officially announced and Juan Laporta also did a press conference after the announcement and they gave us some hints about the future of Barcelona, the imminent future of course in the next 10 days. He came out saying that Barcelona will play in the Luis Campos Stadium during the 2023-2024 season. It is a privilege, there will be a new mobility plan, a reference of the public transport and a functionality service as well. We calculate that playing at the Monge Week all costs all in will cost us around 15 to 20 million euros. Now of course with the rent the stadium, some uh, transport has to be uh, uh, accompanied as well for the Barcelona fans to come from Catalonia to this destination. Apparently, it's around 30 minutes uh, drive, 40 minute walk, 25 minute bike, something like that. It's quite far away for the locals. They're going to make some investments on transport and also on the parking facilities as well. And for the season ticket holders, it will be going based on rotation because keep in mind, there are 80,000 season ticket holders at Barcelona for a 100,000 capacity stadium. The Montjuic is only 55,000 capacity. So what they're gonna have to do is do rotation for the season ticket holders. Now here's the best part about the press conference. The last question that he was asked was about the economic levers and when they'll be activated. And he replied by saying about the levers, you will have some news soon because one is about to be finalized. So there you go. One of them will be activated, hopefully I would believe by the end of this week. But two key factors in this, firstly of course, Montjuic Week Stadium for Barcelona confirmed for the 2023-2024 season. 55,000 euro capacity. There'll be rotation for the season ticket holders, but of course, you can still buy tickets if you're traveling, if you're locally as well. Parking will be uh, accommodated as well. Transportation will be improved upon. It will cost us 20 million euros to rent the stadium for a full season and also economic levers will be activated very very soon. So that was my reaction to the
of Barcelona news over the past 24 hours. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and of course leave me your thoughts down below in the comments on everything we discussed. The main thing I want to firstly is about the Lewandowski saga. Are you still confident that we will sign him this summer despite the fact that Bayern Munich don't want to sell him? Secondly, on the Frankie de Jong Bernardo Silva triangle, do you think in the end if we do sell Frankie de Jong we will sign Bernardo Silva? And finally, on the right wing triangle, do you think Barcelona will sign Rafinha or Angel Di Maria or do you think there's a good chance that Usman Dembele will stay? Would you renew Dembele? If not, would you spend the money for Rafinha or go for Di Maria for one season? And of course, make sure you guys subscribe down below if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next time on the channel. Take care and Forza Barca.